Welcome to episode 707 of the Two Minute Takeaway Podcast. Hi, I'm motivational keynote speaker, Ken Ockel. While many understand its benefits, it's not easy for a lot of people to commit to self-care. Simply put, self-care sees you make healthy choices that can empower your mental and physical health. It's a big part of your work-life balance. Recently, I reached out to my LinkedIn connections with the question, why do people struggle to keep up with self-care? Let's go through their responses and see if any of them describe your situation. Here's the top response with 47% feel guilty prioritizing it. In a busy world, it's easy to find things that keep you from committing to self-care. In many cases, you're not wrong in embracing a strong work ethic. But that can also bring feelings of guilt. Consider, if it's possible, that you might perform better if you took some time to address your needs. Does constantly working harder produce a better performance? Don't feel guilty about taking a lunch break or using that time to unplug for a short walk. Whenever I do something like that, that indulges me, even for a few minutes, I feel refreshed and later wonder, why don't I do that thing more often? Sometimes the best way to work harder sees you pause your day. Next, with 43%, not enough time in the day. Committing to self-care isn't easy when you feel like you're constantly chasing a deadline or a growing list of projects. If you're not careful, work can take over all of your time. And with smartphones, oh, it's harder than ever to disconnect from work. However, meeting the challenge of an out-of-control workload may not be sustainable. Make sure you're spending your time on your most important tasks. Also, think about if you're spending time on things that may not be as important as they used to be. Is it possible some of these activities could be dropped? Receiving 7% of the responses, not enough support. How can you commit to self-care if your employee doesn't seem to care about your well-being? Company culture needs to have space for it. It can be easy for leaders to say they are committed to self-care only to tell employees they'll be working overtime for the next week. A good workplace culture sees modeling of positive behaviors. A negative environment rarely gets better on its own. Finally, with 3%, unsure where to start. In this scenario, people know something is wrong in their lives, but they're not sure how to address it. Smart leaders may share their best practices or introduce tools and techniques to employees. And they may also want to bring in experts for guidance. Whatever happens next is up to the employee but make sure you give them space to accommodate changes. For instance, some businesses give employees time to volunteer in their communities. A volunteer program won't work if volunteering results in a more stressful and hectic day. I've got some cool people for you to meet. Katie the Custodian, Gina the Ballerina, and 20 Push-Ups Pat. These are just some of the characters who are in my new book, Get Better, Smart Business Advice from Unexpected Mentors. The book is out. You can pick it up at Amazon.com. To find out more about the -the behind-the-scenes story of the book, go to my website, KenOakle.com. And while there, you can also watch some clips from my speaking presentations and listen to past episodes of this podcast. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Ken Ogle. Get better and take care.